images in a quiet Fairfax County neighborhood as a SWAT team and police officers and paramedics respond to a barricade situation. Fairfax County police tell us that this started as a domestic dispute and then escalated when officers learned that the man inside the home was armed. Jay Korf joins us live from Springfield tonight with the very latest on this. Jay. Still at this late hour, so many questions about this bizarre barricade left unanswered. What started out as a negotiation ended with a man dead. You never know when something like this is going to happen. You always have to be on your toes. For hours Thursday, this normally quiet section of Springfield was on lockdown. Very scary because I've never seen SWAT team. I'm like coming down the street. I'm like SWAT team. A tactical unit responded to a volatile standoff involving a male homeowner. Clearly it was serious. Scott Dowling walked out of his home and snapped this picture of a heavily armed officer poised to react. A police officer came up to me and said, you need to get out of the area right now. Fairfax County Police say mid-afternoon they responded to a domestic dispute in a townhouse on the 7900 block of Pebble Brook Court. They were told the man inside had weapons. Police say they negotiated with him near the front of the home for some 40 minutes, and then an officer shot the man. Investigators say the man then retreated into his house and refused to come out. We are investigating this as an officer-involved shooting. Um, when the hostage rescue vehicle approached and made entry, and the folks that were going to render aid went inside, they did discover the subject inside deceased. Police say they are now focused on trying to figure out why a shot was fired and if this man was armed or not. At first it just sounded like someone was just barricading in the house, but now hearing about gunshots and supposedly someone, they shot somebody and killed him. I, I, I don't know all the facts, but yeah, it's kind of kind of scary when you think about it. Indeed, this evening tonight, it was very tense. Police have set up a roadblock behind me. Let me move out the way. You can see the mobile command unit right here for the Fairfax County Police. A little to the left, police set up the roadblock, and only residents are allowed to cross where those two cruisers are to get down that block. That is where the shooting took place. Now, many people are concerned, rattled by this police-involved shooting, and this exclusive interview that I obtained tonight brings you closer to this standoff. In this amateur home video you're seeing only on News 4, two Fairfax County police officers, a canine, kneel behind trees near a Springfield, Virginia townhouse. Now take a look at this. Another officer stands with his gun pointed directly at the suspect. The suspect is shown with the screen door open, dressed in shorts, a white shirt. Police say the man barricaded himself in the home and they negotiated with him for 40 minutes. At some point, Fairfax County police fired at least one shot, killing the man this evening. Neighbors tell me they only heard one shot. Seem like a good guy. Tonight, Erica Epps tells me she's been the man's neighbor for nine years. She's even hung out with his family in their townhouse. I feel really bad for the wife and children. You know, we know the kids. My daughter played with them. You know, really good kids. It just breaks my heart. Tonight, police tell me this all started around 2.40 this evening. Police received a 911 call from a woman telling them the man has weapons. Police drove to the 7900 block of Pebble Brook Court. They negotiated with the man. He refused to come outside and he would not allow officers inside. At some point, something happened in those negotiations and an officer fired the shot. Next thing I know, there's a police officer at my car door saying you need to get out of the area right now. Police surrounded the home, knocked down the front door with a police tanker. The SWAT team found the body inside. We don't know why police fired or what they found inside the home. We are involved, investigating this as an officer involved shooting. Tonight, Fairfax County Police have launched a criminal investigation into a deadly officer involved shooting. And this comes as the victim's family says they've learned John Gear was not armed when an officer shot and killed him during a standoff in Springfield. Stephen Cheetah live in Springfield with the latest twist in this still unfolding case. Stephen. Audrey, I just spoke with a man who says he is a close relative of John Gear, the man who was shot and killed here last week. He he told me that an investigator told him that Gear did not have a gun on him when he was shot, but he did say that the investigators found a handgun in the home after the shooting, but it was several feet away from Gear on the landing of a stairway. Police got a call Thursday from a woman reporting a domestic dispute and stating the man in this Springfield townhouse was armed, prompting a massive police response with armored vehicle and SWAT teams surrounding the property. 
His family says 46-year-old John Gere stood with his hands visibly resting on the door above his head as officers negotiated with him to come out. He apparently dropped one of his arms, and an officer opened fire. It wasn't warranted killing someone, no. Paul Harrington is the father of the woman who lived with Gear. He says someone in the family spoke with an investigator and learned Gear did not have a gun on him. Harrington believes police are justified in looking closer at just what prompted the officer to shoot. I think there is an investigation of why a, uh, a man just with his hands in the air and then lowering him all of a sudden got shot. I think possibly it's probably more of an accident that maybe the cop or the police officer holding it might have jerked or something else. Malika Durder lives next door. She says she can't imagine Gear threatening anyone. She believes the officer who shot Gear misinterpreted the movement of his arm. Yeah. I think they overdid it. You don't think? Knowing him, you can't imagine? No, 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 I don't think so. He, yeah, the police overdid it. Now, once this investigation is wrapped up, the evidence will be handed over to the Commonwealth's attorney, who will make a determination about whether or not to press charges against the officer involved in this shooting. Now, as to why Gear would not come out of the home, his relative tells me that he had been going through some difficulties and that he was a very stubborn man. Reporting live, Stephen Cheetah, ABC 7 News.